so I also, by the way, have my fan on in the background. It is so stupidly hot recently. It's been like in the upper to mid-90s for the past couple days, and it isn't gonna stop until like the start of next week, so I have just been dying, because if you guys don't know, I don't have AC. I just have fans and an open window, so uh, whenever I film my ASMR videos, I, 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 I pass away. It's very bad, but uh, I try my best for you guys, but yeah. So a little bit of a sports whisper ramble. I have some triggers that I have with me that I'm going to do throughout the video as well, but we're going to talk sports, and of course we're going to talk NBA first, because that's the only thing I can really ramble on as best as I possibly can. Now, the NBA season really has been at a stalemate for a lot of different reasons, for a lot of different teams. I know recently a couple of NBA teams have actually have come out with their newest jerseys. I'm obviously going to be talking about them in a jersey video later on because I, I've always done NBA jersey videos on my channel and I'm going to do it again this year when all the teams announce their jerseys but for the sake of not really having a lot to talk about the Sacramento Kings actually recently well not recently a couple months ago I think it was came out with their team jerseys that look pretty similar to what they always do I think they look really nice I love the purple colorway of the Kings I actually didn't really like it when they were using that like like red white and blue styling it's like their classic throwback jerseys I didn't really like those all that much I really like the you know the purple the Sacramento King purple and these jerseys are pretty okay but the Phoenix Suns actually have a completely different look like it is like well, not completely different but it is definitely new and I kind of like their away jerseys a lot more with like that deep purple color again um for some reason the white the home jersey just looks off to me I don't really know why but maybe it's just like the lettering on them or something like that but I think they look kind of okay and uh, every year uh jerseys are my absolute favorite thing to look at when it comes to the NBA of course some teams have new home you know away jerseys or even of course like their city editions their alternative jerseys or the classic their throwbacks are always so fun to, to look at so hopefully those start rolling in in a while and I think the NFL's jerseys also recently came in for some teams we're gonna look at those when we talk about the NFL but talk NBA jerseys super excited for when those start to roll around um not really sure what we can really talk about because again most things are, are, are at a stalemate right now you can say it's because of superstars still not being traded like James Harden Damian Lillard team still waiting around for what's gonna happen with them what pieces are gonna get moved like with like Tyler Hero and is James Harden getting traded to the Clippers is he staying is there another team that could get involved yada 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 a lot of teams are still at a stalemate which comes to I think the first topic we're gonna go into is actually going over the win totals the win 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 totals for next season betting over or under yes we're gonna be doing some sports betting I guess technically you want to call it sports betting I'm not actually gonna be betting but if I was a betting man what would I do so they have almost all the teams some teams still don't have the over under odds on Portland is one of them and I think the 76ers is the other no they have the 76ers okay Portland they don't have and they, I think they have some other teams as well maybe if I can miscount one or two of them because obviously Damien Lillard hasn't been traded yet so they have to wait for the Dame trade to happen until they can put their over and under odds so they don't have them anyways starting at the bottom the projected worst team in the NBA win total wise so the worst team in the NBA the Washington Wizards the Wizards the Wizards the Wizards are projected 
puncher's chance, whatever that saying is, for a playing spot. I think they can maybe sneak into a 10 seed there. It obviously depends on what happens with like Orlando and Charlotte and all those other sort of like maybe teams. Um, and then a very surprising San Antonio Spurs at a 29 and a half with the Spurs win 30 or more games this year with Victor Wembenyama. Oh man, that's tough. Um, now for some people, it's an easy over. I don't think it's that easy, but I will say over. I'll bet the over if I had to bet. Um, you know, I don't think the. I've heard some people say, like, I mean, like sports writers and people on TV say that the Spurs could be a sneaky playoff team if Victor Wembanyama is actually what he should be. That's crazy. If you think that's what's gonna happen, I don't think that's a possibility, but. The Spurs were actually pretty decent for a pretty good chunk of the season last year until they inevitably started tanking because who wasn't going to tank last year? Everyone was trying to. And I think they could they can win 30 they can win 30 more or more games, I think. I'll bet the over. We have the Charlotte Hornets at 29 and a half. I'll also bet the over. Um again, a fully healthy season. And then I think they're also kind of surprisingly getting Miles Bridges back this season, which is interesting how that whole entire thing is still, like, I guess he's okay to come back and play basketball, I guess, I don't know. Uh, the Rockets at 31 and a half. Do I want to bet the over? I know a lot of these teams are obviously going to get injured and stuff, so it's kind of hard to tell tell that, but they did get a lot of veteran, veteran help with, like, Dylan Brooks and some other random players, but I'll bet the over just because last year they were just so bad and they did improve this year, but they just didn't really improve in the way probably everyone thought they were going to improve, like acquiring young assets and things like that. They got, you know, Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks and blah, 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 like very interesting additions to their team. Then a huge jump to the Utah Jazz at 36 and a half. in their 
best player is a, a 3 and D fourth option. And Mikhail Bridges, but he seems to be pretty pretty okay in that role that he's in right now. So 36 and a half. I would. I'll bet the over. I think there'll be like a play-in team sort of like battling out in that sort of area. Same thing with the Bulls, 37 and a half. I'll bet the over, but not by a lot, especially with again not having Lonzo Ball. Uh, Pacers at 36 and a half. I'll bet the over. I think they're going to be. I don't even think they're going to be really battling for a play-in seed. I think they're going to be battling for like that, you know, nine, eight, seven spot. They're going to be in there. I think uh, acquiring Bruce Brown, even though for a bag, definitely overpaying. That team has, you know, enough veteran depth and sort of readiness to get there. I think Tyrese Halliburton has been in the league long enough to really sort of like rely on himself a lot more, maybe become a player that not only is just having great stats, but acquires that with winning. And I think this team, I think, has a little bit of a chance to make it happen this year. Nothing crazy, though. Uh, another big jump to 42 and a half wins with the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks, now that is super tricky, of course, with Trey Young and basically just the same team. They ran it back with last year. I'm actually going to take a look at the standings for the... I'll bet the under. I think they'll probably get like 42, 41, 40 wins again. I don't think they're going to do anything too crazy. I don't see them getting like 45 plus wins. That's kind of tough, especially since last year they didn't even get, you know, over 500. They were just 500, 41 and 41. We have the uh, Pelicans. 42 and a half. Uh, that's tough because, again, with the, the injury bug and whatnot, they also last year had 42 wins. So, do I think they'll have more wins than last year? I guess I have to say yes because it's a fully healthy season and I have to think about it as like a fully healthy ish style of season. But, man, that drama with Zion basically the entire year is that going to sort of bring a halt to a lot of what has been going on? the locker room into the season. Okay, I definitely need to go a little bit faster with these. I feel like I've been taking a really long time. Okay, the Minnesota Timberwolves with 43 and a half. So, will they win 44 or more wins next year? I am going to take the under. I think they'll be around like 42, 41 again like they were last year. Nothing too crazy there. Unless Andy Network just has like a crazy, 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 crazy sort of jump of an NBA season. That team really didn't get that much better. Maybe if they're fully healthy, because I know Carthy Towns was hurt for a vast majority of the year last year. Could be interesting, but I'll, I'll see them being around like a 7th, 8th seeded team again probably next season. The Thunder. The Oklahoma City Thunder have a over-under of a 44 and a half. The Thunder have projected to win 45 games next year. 45 games, by the way, would make them uh, fourth in last year's NBA Western Conference. I'm betting the under. <laughs> I I love OKC. Uh, SGA, one of my favorite players to watch. Jed Holmgren, really excited to watch him play. Josh Giddy, super funny guy. Follow him on TikTok. He's super, super cool. Maybe they just have some crazy growth year and they, they boom onto the scene and kind of like how the Memphis Grizzlies did a handful of years ago, but I just don't see it. I love the players. I think they have what it takes, but I don't think next year they're going to be a, a four seed potentially. And like the Sacramento Kings, 45 and a half wins over under. So that would be what, 46 wins? They won 48 last year. I'll take the over. I think they'll probably be just as good or even better next season. Having another year under their belt with a team that was pretty much just scrambled together last year and really hit it off very well. Having an entire season under their belt and a fiery loss in the first round against a rival Golden State Warriors team. I think they're going to come back swinging even harder next season. Don't be surprised if Sacramento is maybe sniffing the one seed and more likely the two or three seed next year. I, I, it wouldn't really surprise me, honestly. We have the Knicks with 45 and a half wins as well. So a 46 win team. Last year there were 47. I am going to bet, you know, because I'm going to a Knicks game next year, I'm going to bet the over and hope to God one of the one of the wins they have in a year is the game that I go to because that would be really fun. But, yeah, I don't know. I think the Knicks are obviously just an up and down team. You don't know if the Knicks are going to be, you know, a playoff ready team or going to be tanking next season. It's always wishy-washy. I mean, there was that year when they had Julius Randle be all NBA second team and then the next year they just weren't anything. So last year 
last year they had 38 wins, which is pretty bad. Um, you know, I, I do think the adding of some defensive players on their team is going to help them out a lot. I think having another year totally with Kyrie, with Luka on the team can really help out to set up game plan a little bit better instead of just throwing out their all-stars on the court and just praying that something good happens, I think, with them finally having, hopefully, some sort of game plan could work out for them, so I'll bet the over. The Grizzlies with 45 and a half over under, I'll bet the under on this one, uh, without John Morant for like 20-ish games, give or take. I don't know how well that's really gonna go. Um, I think they can definitely do it. I mean, we've seen Memphis play without Jaw, Morant, and maybe even play better without Jaw. Then you get Smart, get Smart on the team. That could even make the team better. Could make it worse, but I don't know. We'll really have to see what really happens with the rest of the roster and sort of how this whole ordeal sort of carries over to the next NBA season. But them being a 46-win team like uh, this year, and they won 40, and they won 51 last year. I do see them digressing a little bit. Maybe not that much. Uh, maybe I'll bet the over, but I said over too much. I'll make it spicy and say under just because. Um, the LA Clippers at 47 and a half over under. Definitely betting the under on this one. Actually, I'm going to bet the over on Memphis, bet the under on the Clippers because that is insane. The LA Clippers winning 48 games next year. I do not see that happening. They won 44 last year. I guess that was also without really having Kawhi or Paul George on the team last year, but you know, Kawhi and Paul George are another year older. All those players are another year older. They are just continuously running this team back and back and back and back and hoping that it plays off well for the NBA playoffs, and it hasn't happened yet. Maybe this year they just rest Kawhi and Paul George for the entire NBA season so they can't get hurt before the playoffs start. Maybe that's their game plan. I don't know. We have the Lakers with 47. Well, it's 46 and a half, but will they win 47 or more games? Oh, boy. They did get better last year, but I still feel like kind of the same thing with the Clippers. They are just not a regular season team. They are just not going to really care where they sit um, when the playoffs start. So I actually, I think I'm going to bet the under. I think they'll be around like 44, 45, 46. I don't think I can really see them sniffing 50 wins, to be completely honest. We have the Miami Heat, actually, um, for um, the official Caesars sports bookings. They don't have an over-under, but for FanDuel, they have their over-under, which is weird, of a 48-and-a-half win season. So will they win 49 or more games? If this is with Damian Lillard, I'll bet the over. If it's without Dame, it's the under. But they're probably going to have Dame, so I'll bet they can win. I think they can win 49 games next year. Uh, the team is basically the same team. You're just pretty much subtracting like Tyler Hero and like a couple of like young guys. They weren't even really playing all that much either. You're still keeping like Caleb Martin and Duncan Robinson and all those guys. You're probably still maybe even keeping Kyle Lowry. I have no idea, but um, that team is still very much good enough. You're just plopping in Damian Lillard, who just had his best uh, single like player statistical season in franchise history last year, and you're putting him with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo in that defensively minded Miami Heat team. That's just, that's insane. I'll, I'll bet the over on that one for sure. For the Golden State Warriors, theirs is 48 and a half. So would they win 49 or more games? I'm going to bet the under. I think the Warriors have always, they've always been a regular season team, always striving to get the best from their team in the regular season. But I think again this year, they're just going to try to make it to the playoffs as healthy as possible and try to make another title run with their team. So I'm betting the under on that. You have these 76ers with 50, 50 and a half. So will they win 51 or more games? I'm going to bet if they keep James Harden, which I actually think they're going to keep James Harden. I don't think he's going to get traded to the Clippers or anywhere. I think he's going to stay on that team. 50 wins. I'll bet the over. I think they might get like 51 wins last year. The 76ers had 54. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers are also with 50 and a half. I'll also bet the over. I really like Cleveland. I think they are also going to be, again, like last season, a dark horse for
Suns, the Phoenix Suns, the new super team, Phoenix Suns at 51 and a half. Will they win 52 games or more? Last year, Phoenix won 45. Are they going to win 52 games? I am going to say... I'm going to say... Under, I think... The, well, last year, let's just say this. Last year, Denver, the number one seeded team in the West, got 53 wins. I don't think uh, the Phoenix Suns are going to be in a sort of contention to be a number one seeded team. I don't think they're just that deep enough, but they obviously have that very top-heavy of Bradley Beal, KD, Booker, blah, blah, blah. So I think they'll be around 50. They'll be like 51, 52, but I don't think they're going to be sniffing like a 55, 58 wins. That's kind of too crazy. Then we have the uh, Milwaukee Bucks at 54. I am going to bet the over. Uh, they're basically the same team like they were last year, and they won 58 games last year. So I think they're probably going to be a little bit worse than they were last year, but nothing too crazy on that one. Um, the Denver Nuggets are the second highest ranked team. They're not even ranked as the best, uh, I guess, record projected for next season. Uh, so Denver, 54 wins. I'll bet the over. I think they'll probably be like, yeah, probably like battling for that one seated uh, spot again. Probably getting like 55 around that little area of wins and the number one team record-wise, projected, betting-wise. The Boston Celtics, the Boston Celtics are actually, right now, the number one projected team, record-wise, at 55 wins or more. Do I think the Boston Celtics won 55 or more games next season? Last year, they won 57, and I'm betting the over. I think they're probably going to be almost a 60-win team. I think they will probably have uh, the number one seeded team in the East next year. They might have the best record. They're young. They have depth. They're adding in a big piece with Kristaps Porzingis. I think they are super hungry this year, and I, it wouldn't surprise me. If, if they win the championship this year, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So, yeah. Um, finally, we got that done and over with. That was a lot of fun. Let me know who you think is going to be, you know, the team with the best record, the worst record. I would really actually love to know your opinion on that. My nose is so itchy for some reason. I think it's because I'm sweating. Uh, one thing I definitely have noticed since it's been summer and I've been sweating so much and not being able to like cool off because I'm filming, I'm starting to break out a lot more. My skin is dying. It's a lot more irritated because I'm just roasting in my room filming content for you guys, which is okay, which is okay. But yeah, I am super excited about the next NBA season. I guess another thing we do kind of quickly when wrapping up the NBA talk is a game mode that you guys really wanted me to try. No, it is not uh, uh, Bodle. I think it's how you pronounce it. Bodle. Bodle, 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 Bodle. I'm trying the crossover grid game. Yes, if you guys don't know, this grid game has been all over TikTok and YouTube. I think they've even had it on like ESPN a couple times. It's a, it's a sort of game mode that is pretty popular. 
Wallace. If you don't know, Gerald Wallace was involved in the first round pick that actually got Damian Lillard to Portland because that pick was actually Brooklyn's pick for that year. Shout out to the New York, uh, I'm sorry, the Brooklyn Nets for that one. Shout out to Gerald Wallace for getting us Damian Lillard. And a Blazer Thunder player. Um, one that's obviously kind of easy would be, um, oh actually, yeah, let's, let's give my boy some more love. Carmelo Anthony, very easy. I was going to do Raymond Felton, but Blazer fans don't really like Raymond Felton, so we'll give a, a big shout out to Carmelo, kind of an easy one. Okay, so we need a Lakers, Brooklyn Nets, and Laker player, like I just said. Uh, I think the easiest one would be D'Angelo Russell, of course. Um, my favorite version of D'Angelo is Brooklyn Nets D'Angelo. He was so much fun to watch, and him sprout into the player that I can't really say he is anymore, but what he was in Brooklyn was a lot of fun to watch. That's a pretty, pretty easy one. A Lakers Thunder player. Oh man, a Laker Thunder player. Oh man, well there obviously has to be one, so that's kind of tough. Or a Laker player born outside of the United States. Um, I could do another Spaniard with. A uh, player that some people really gaslit to be a very big key piece to this team that didn't really turn out to be that well was Mark Gasol, uh, another Spaniard teaming up with Rick Fernandez and those Spaniard uh, teams for the Olympics. Shout out to Mark Gasol. A Laker Thunder player. That's going to take me a little bit. Let's see if we can do the 20 point and 20 rebound one. Well, of course, one I think probably happened for the Oklahoma City Thunder would have to be Russell Westbrook, right? I think Russ did do that for um, a game, surely, right? Yes, okay, that was kind of easy, that's a gimme. And then a 20 point per game, sorry, a 20 point, 20 rebound or assist game from a Brooklyn Nets player. I don't think Kevin Durant ever did, I don't think Kyrie ever did, maybe James Harden, but I kind of want to try one really quick first with Brooke Lopez. Oh, Brooke Lopez never did. Are you kidding me? Brooke Lopez was like the best player in franchise history for a big, big, big part of the Brooklyn Nets sort of franchise. But probably James Harden probably had a game like that while playing in Brooklyn. Oh, wait, you only had a certain... Oh, no. I only had a certain number of guesses. I didn't even see that. Oh. I definitely could have gotten that next one. Oh, Russell Westbrook, of course. Oh, Russell Westbrook could have been that one. Oh, that's good. That's a good one. So what, you can only get one mistake? If I knew that, I would have taken my time a little bit more. I, did, I, I, I didn't, I've never played this game before, actually, so that's fun. That was really cool. I could have gotten it, but I didn't know you only could make one mistake. That's kind of crazy. That was a lot of fun. Let me know if you guys want me to do more of those that could be that could be nice. I wanted to stop because I wanted to talk other sports let's say that um we have the NFL now with I think the first thing we want to talk about is of course the New Jersey's had some players um, some players some teams are repping 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 next year uh if you know of any other ones you can let me know and I can check them out by myself or let others know that they are New Jersey's for that team down in the comments but also I only found 11 of them so we won't speak about them for that long but okay, uh, some of the, the, the new ones that I have seen so far have been, the first one they talk about are the Detroit Lions. We're actually getting a new, uh, just a blue, blue out, blue out, blue out helmet, which looks kind of interesting. Um, the lion looks a little bit different. I'm assuming that's for a reason. Um, it says here, the classic logo pays tribute to the club's heritage, which is kind of and they also have a designed 90th anniversary logo for the 90th season of Detroit Lion football, which that is actually super insane that we're already at year 90 for an NFL team. Uh, that's, I didn't even know that that was happening. So they're getting like a throwback jersey, it looks like, which is actually kind of cool. Um, they also have the uh, Arizona Cardinals. It seems like they are getting a little bit kind of just like a retouch up. It's a 
and y'all know me, I don't know too much about the NFL, but I do know enough to think that the Kansas City Chiefs are just, they're so dominant, and I don't really know who can really take them out, to be completely honest. Now, I think the 49ers will be my pick to come out of the NFC this year. I think it's going to be them or Philly, probably them or Philly. is the Athletics with 30 wins. 
second place 11 games back that's crazy that's insane shot to the Braves it's probably from that uh that Morgan Wallen song the 98 Braves Morgan Wallen song they're probably getting a lot of motivation from that from that song the Nationals are in last place with 45 wins in the National League Central Division we have the Reds at 59 wow who would have thought the Reds would be in first place definitely not me with the Brewers who would probably be the team that I would have picked at 58 half a game back with the Cardinals at 47 wins in dead last we have the National League West with the Dodgers at 60 wins leading that little uh, division there with the Giants in second place the hot little start of the Diamondbacks 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 is cooling off going three and seven of their last ten they're gonna need to pull off a couple big time wins here to get back in that number one spot and then another one of my favorite teams the uh, San Diego Padres this year spent a lot of money and didn't do anything with it they are fourth right now with 53 wins and not looking great but yeah it's going to be a tight race to make it into the end so that NBA playoffs, the MLB, the MLB, the MLB playoffs. Uh, right now, the Angels, I'm going to talk about them, are eighth in the American League to try to make it into the uh, wild card spot. They are right now three games behind for the wild card spot. They only the three games. I think they can make it. I'm hoping because if they don't, they're probably not going to resign Otani, which is going to be terrible that they lose Shohei Otani, probably the the greatest like talent in baseball ever. Like he might be the most talented baseball player ever, and they're gonna lose him for nothing. That's so sad. Uh, then you have the Red Sox, who are one and a half games back of their wild card spot. So man, it's close, really, really close. A lot of teams are still only like three and a half, three games back. So it's still a very, very, very tight race in the American League, in the National League. Um, the Diamondbacks only a game back, and the Marlins are also only a game back of their own wild cards. So, this is insane. This is a very, very, very tight race for a lot of teams. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the Orioles are the number one seeded team in the American League, and the Braves are the number one seeded team in the National League. Very crazy. Then, like, the Reds are third, which is looks weird to me. I don't know why. It just doesn't look right, but... That's the thing about baseball is that, you know, teams that aren't sort of super notoriety and popular and have a, a superstar like the Angels or some other teams out there, you don't need it. With baseball, you just need good play from a lot of good players and for a lot of teams out there who have been maybe bad for a while or finally getting their, their runs in or they're just playing good baseball, which is very impressive. So yeah, that's what we got going on for the M. LB season and then um uh, I, I've had some people talk a little soccer which I'm not too sure what's really going on in soccer to be completely honest or football 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 I know the um uh, women's world cup is actually going on right now which I think is on here if I look it up. Um, women's friendlies. Do they have it on here? Oh my god, they better have it on here. Okay, yeah, they do. Okay. Uh, the table. Women's World Cup right now in Group A. We have Switzerland in first place for Group A. We have Group B, Australia leading Group B. Group C, we have Japan leading Group C. Group D, we have England and, and in first it's coming home. <laughs> group E, we have the Netherlands with the U.S. women's team also in Group E in second place with five points against the Netherlands. Seven points. Yikes, that's not great. In Group F, we have Jamaica. Uh, in Group G, we have Sweden. In Group H, the leader is Colombia. Colombia, Colombia. But I think the top two teams move on to the, the next little next round which is really good because I think I think the US can definitely can they definitely they can beat out Portugal obviously Portugal is always a great sort of uh, sort of country for, for football players but the US has always been known as being a pretty dominant women's football team so let's hope that can happen but yeah um, for 
Yes, of course. <sighs> Inter Miami with Messi has been a very big topic. Um, right now, Inter Miami is actually dead last. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Yeah.